There's one right there. That feels good. There's one. Wow. It's <laughs> a net. There. there we go. <laughs> good one. Real good one. Look at that beast. Beautiful. We got it. Wow, it's a big one, dude. Oh, man. Nice job, you two. Lundboats proudly presents the ultimate fishing experience. This week on Lund's The Ultimate Fishing Experience. This past season, walleye fishing on Winnie in north central Minnesota has been on fire. Everyone is catching impressive numbers of eater sized fish. In mid August, with surface temps in the upper 70s, finding walleyes in as little as three feet of water in daytime full sun doesn't seem likely. But the massive amounts of bait in the shallows draw in huge schools of hungry, winny walleyes. Some of Lund Pro Tony Roach's best childhood memories were fishing Winnie's shallow water bite, and he knows from experience that the bite can last the entire season. Tony is joined today by his good friend Nate Brown from McArdle's Resort. The day promises to be filled with action. They both know they're gonna catch a lot of walleyes, but hope they can find a few big ones. Hey, I'm Tony Roach, joined by my good buddy, Nate Brown from McArdles. We're up on Big Winnie, fishing midsummer walleyes, doing one of my favorite things, and that's pitching shallow water. Winnie is one of those systems that you can have fish shallow all season long. Not only are they shallow, they're very plentiful. We're catching walleyes like crazy, catching tons and tons of walleyes. It's just a matter of getting a few big ones. We might even do a little trolling today to cover some water in that shallow water, show you how to do some shallow water trolling, shallow water pitching. We're gonna be fishing out of the redesigned 1975 Lund Pro V. Beautiful day, it's beautiful yeah, boat. The fish are biting, let's go get them. It's late summer, surface temps are in the upper 70s, but guess what, the fish are shallow. On Lake Winnebagosh, that's a lot of times the case. The fish are shallow because the bait's there. You know, some of my earliest memories of fishing Winnebagosh were coming out here, jig fishing with my dad in shallow water, six feet and under, and that's exactly what we're gonna do today. However, we're gonna be pitching plastics. I love throwing plastics up on the shallow water ruck structure, on the weed lines, even just some of these sand flats just hold tons of bait, and guess what, the walleyes follow. You know, if we get into a situation where it's high sun, or even just flat calm conditions, and those fish start to scatter off that structure, we might even troll some shallow water spinners, and we'll show you exactly how we go about both tactics for catching fish this time of year. There he is. This one's a little better. Oh yeah, nice fish. Nate, I need a net here, buddy. Nice fish. <laughs> Nate, that one hit it three times. That's the thing is when you're pitching these paddle tails, you know, we're letting it hit the bottom and we're working it back to the boat, but I see a lot of guys, they'll cast it out and then they get about halfway in and they just crank that bait all the way back in. I always work my paddle tails all the way back to the boat. I could feel this one hit it three, four, five different times. Yeah, he was just thumping it and thumping it. Finally, he took it right in the mouth, just drilled that thing. That's what I love about fishing plastics versus live bait, not just this time of year, but all season, is I can really whip that bait, I can pop it, I can add a lot of action. A lot of times, you know, if you get a fish that hits a, a let's say a shiner minnow or a minnow in general, they rip that bait down or they pull it off the hook, so you only get one shot at that fish. This fish hit it three, four, five different times before he committed to it. So having that plastic on there really saved me. And a lot of times too, when you're fishing live bait, they'll short bite it. Whereas the plastic, they'll finally just come up and smoke that thing. All right, let's put this one back. Awesome. When I'm pitching and ripping plastics like this, you know, it's really important to have like a fluorocarbon leader with the braid. Um, I like that because then I can feel everything. Um, I can feel when fish are hitting it. I can feel when that bait gets fouled. Uh, if you get sand grass on there, anything you can feel. And like I said, as soon as we got into this harder bottom, you can feel that jig thumping the rocks. You know, that's really important to be able to feel everything, especially when you're casting from afar or if it's windy, you know, I fish a lot of big water. You wanna be able to feel everything and that fluorocarbon braid combination will give you that. 
You know, a real benefit to that fluorocarbon is just how abrasion resistant it is. When you're fishing lakes like this where you have a lot of pike or zebra mussels, zebra mussels are like razors, you wanna make sure you have something that has a lot of abrasion resistance and that's what you get from the fluorocarbon. Closed captioning is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. There you there go, Chelsea. Perfect size. That's what we're after. Oh, there's another one. You know, it seems like when they're feeding. There, there we go. And he's hooked up again. Looks like another perfect eater. Right. Beautiful. It's a beautiful thing. Yep, there he is. He finally came back. He kept on hitting it. Nice. Little scrapper. I like that. Jeez, he's still mad. There he is. Great year classes. You know, there's a couple really good year classes coming up. Unbelievable numbers. I mean, Nate's got one. When you get into them, you find these just wolf packs of these. You know, I'd say 13 to 15 inch fish. It's just, it's remarkable. You know, this lake is almost all natural spawning, so it's really cool to see. So I tell you what, growing up, oh, growing up uh, at McArdle's Resort on the lake, to see all the changes as the years go by. Um, constantly changing from a standpoint of your year classes of fish, the structure changes, your weed lines changing. You know, in the 90s, it was, there was a lot of pike, and then there's been up and down years uh, on the walleyes and the perch fishing. Winnie's very well known for perch. Uh, there you go. Look at that. And doubling up back there. But to see the way that the lake's been managed and having, the, having a few good springs in a row and good hatches, resulting in a lot of good eating walleyes and a lot of fun. Uh, I've been definitely fortunate and, and endlessly grateful, there Tony's on, to, uh, to be raised out here. I'm super grateful to live by such an amazing resource that Winnebagash is. It's, uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a very cool place to be raising a family. So we're the third generation at McArdle's and just looking to keep it going. Like being in Ontario. One thing cool about Lake Winnebagash is that there's just endless bars, brake lines, humps, flats. Uh, it's really cool. Uh, what you can find uh, on whatever part of the lake you're fishing. It's very cool to see all the different bait behavior based on where you are, whether it's crayfish, fatheads, shiners. You can find just a variety of bites just throughout a day of fishing. It's a endless puzzle and it's pretty cool. Hooked up, boys. Just inhaled it. Look at that. He wanted that paddle tail. Just choked it down. That's usually how they hit those plastics is they don't mess around, man. They inhale it. You know, Nate was talking about Winnebagosh and the diversity of this fishery as far as bait fish movements and patterns. You know, this is one of the lakes that's just super fertile. We've talked a lot about all the bait on the surface. We've seen perch, we've seen shiners. 
You know, Nate switched colors. He went to a green UV up in this spot. There's a little more color in the water, so it makes sense. But also we're seeing more perch up here. Earlier we were seeing a lot of shiners, kind of that bluish color. Anytime I'm fishing like a spot tail shiner bite or a shiner bite in particular, I like a lot of whites and blues and that sort of thing. As soon as I see that they're really actively feeding on perch or if you know you get some color into the water i like to use a jig head that's got a little more color this is a green uv one of my favorite colors not just in open water but in winter as well and that goes for lead head jigs that goes for jigging wraps you know just that that green uv color is just a great mimic perch color if you will that subtle color change on that jig head can make a huge difference Get him. Oh, nice. Need a net? Fair. No, nice eater. Beautiful. Good eating. The golden loin. One thing cool about being uh, being from the resort is seeing the amount of healthy eater fish. It, uh, it is definitely a promising sign for the future. Uh, the next handful of years are gonna be super fun. For now, as far as guiding and having guests, everybody's having fun catching these beautiful eaters. I love this whole area up here in the fall though. Like mm -hmm. all of this. Yeah. Get them? Got them. They're up and comer. You know, we've had a great morning pitching plastics, Nate. You know, with the, it being so calm out here, uh, you know, there's still a lot of fish that are shallow, but they're really kind of spread out. We're picking them off here and there. You know, sometimes a better way to get to these fish is like pulling spinners or trolling. Winnebagosh has lots and lots of structure, but it also has lots of structureless flats that hold fish. You know, we've set it all day long. There's bait all over the water column. These fish are kind of cruising these big flats and by covering water with spinners is just a great program up here. This time of year when we're fishing shallow there's a lot of eelgrass, a lot of sand grass, that sort of thing. And so I'm just using a simple spinner setup. This is a two-rig harness. I'm just hooking the crawler like so. I always keep a little slack in my line here uh, for your secondary hook and then Always I just kind of nip off just a little bit of the end. It gives it a little scent. It also shortens some of those really big crawlers so you don't get those short biters. And then I run about a four foot leader on here, five at the most, and then just using a really light sinker. This one happens to be like a quarter ounce, you know, perfect for the depth we're fishing. And then speed is the most important of this whole method is keeping your speed, you know, anywhere from 1.4 all the way up to two miles an hour. Now I'm just going out about 40 or 50 feet behind the boat. Um, I don't have a line counter on this particular reel, but you really, sometimes you're just right in the prop wash. So I just kind of count out the line, keeping it around, like I said, 40 to 50 feet. And then the biggest thing is just maintaining that speed. The rod I'm using, you can see it's a seven foot medium heavy. This is a really good rod for what we're doing. Now, these fish are gonna hit it, especially at that speed. Now. You can leave it in the rod holder and let it load up. What I like to do is just kind of hold the spinner and then when they hit, you feel them hit, then I just drop that rod back as far as I can, give them a little bit and then just sort of sweep it. I'm not doing great big hook sets, I'm just dropping it back and then sweeping it. There's a fish, I'm gonna give him some line. Nah, not bad. They're jumping out here on Winnie. Another eater, Nate. Absolutely whap the spinner. You know, this is a, a spot in particular that, you know, pulling spinners versus pitching is definitely the way to go. We're on a huge flat. There's just kind of some loose rocks scattered all over this flat. But without trolling, I mean, it's really hard to pinpoint them. This bait's moving all over. Constantly on the screen, we're seeing bait then you're covering over walleyes that are suspended. I, I saw those two, I commented to Nate that, boom, oh, here comes two, and so we're ready. You know, it's nice to be able to cover water at almost two miles an hour pulling these spinners and really 
work these huge flats effectively. There we go, there's a fish. Fish on. 1.7 miles an hour right on the edge, Nate. Seven feet of water. And that's the thing, when you're fishing the system, don't be worried about being on the bottom. The fish can see it. You know, we're only in seven to 10 feet of water. You know, I'm trying to maintain my distance off the bottom, maybe a foot or two, but don't worry about the bottom. I get so many people that, you know, they're, they're so wrapped up, up into, am I in the bottom or not? am I on the bottom? Don't, it's, it's not a big deal. These fish are coming up to hit it. They're feeding on all that bait at the surface, you know. We're seeing lots of fish today that are just subsurface and whatnot. They'll come up and hit that spinner. Just like that. Nice, slow down. And like I was saying, no need to worry about being on the bottom. You know, these fish will come up and hit it. They're feeding all over in the water column. And when you're under 10 feet of water, they'll come back and see it. I, I basically just throw it behind the boat, keep my speed. You know, the biggest thing is just maintaining that speed. That's the big thing. So if you have wind out here, you're gonna wanna quarter the waves a little bit or troll downwind if you can. If you're really trying to buck the waves and you can't keep your speed, you know, that's, the, that's probably the biggest uh, part of this whole equation when you're pulling spinners is just maintaining that speed. And uh, you know, the fish will come up and crack it. And what I'll do too is if I'm not getting bites, I'll try to up my speed a little bit or vary my speed, adding a few turns in there as those spinners drop. It's just like pulling crankbaits. You know, if you increase your speed and boom, boom, you get your strikes, then you know you need to troll a little bit faster. Today we've been fishing out of the redesigned Lund Pro-V. This is the 1975 model. Lund has been making Pro-Vs for 35 years now. I remember fishing out of my dad's Pro-V when we got a Pro-V, one of the first Pro-Vs, and I remember thinking, it doesn't get any better than this. And now you fast forward to today and you look at what a fishing machine the Pro-V has come. I couldn't be happier. There's a lot of well thought out designs with anglers in mind. Let's start with the redesigned aft portion. You know, the first thing that stands out that's super noticeable is the change in the live well and the seat configuration. They've added a great live well system with a tool holder, you've got cup holders, and then of course, something that I really like as a guide, as a professional, is the fact that they've added two jump seats in the back. More room for more customers, more seating room, and a great addition to the back of this boat. As we move forward to the council portion, some real notable changes that have been done. The first one that I noticed was the bigger dash area for having and accommodating bigger electronics. Nowadays, the electronics are getting bigger. There's a much bigger workspace to accommodate that. And then this really nice lure pad that you can hang hooks on so they're out of the way. In addition to that, this boat has lots of storage. It has enough compartments and drawers to hold over 30 standard trays. You know, that's important to me as an angler, as a guide, I'm a multi-species angler. I like to have my tackle and trays. I like to have it put away. And when I'm working off in the bow, there's a few new changes that I really like. The first thing you'll notice is a removable bait well. That's really nice if you're carrying bait in and out, uh, going to bait shops, loading it in your boat. You don't have to worry about putting it in your fixed bait well. Then there's some really well thought out placed tool holders right in the front. Right at my fingertips, I'm constantly in the bow, running back and forth, grabbing tools. Not anymore, they're, they're really well placed. And then in addition, there's a wraparound LED light strip throughout the entire boat. Some really well thought out revisions to an already great fishing boat. The Pro-V is my boat of choice. I love this model, I love loved the changes they've made. Up on top. I'll keep casting off the deep side and catching nothing and there we go. There you go, Nate. Another nice one. Pulled up on these humps, went back to pitching plastics. You know, it's incredible. We came to this spot in the morning. It's a dead flat calm. We've had intermittent, very little wind, right? We've ran all over. 
we're kind of just targeting the areas outside the reef and as soon as we slipped up on top Nate started popping a few I got one it goes to show you even though there's no wind these fish are still right up on top of the structure they don't go out and leave they're just sitting here waiting until that next wind front or whatever and as you can see I mean there's plenty of bait fish in the water our graph is constantly full of bait so even though this, this just this gentle breeze isn't much, you wouldn't think of it as a walleye chop, they're right up on top of this thing. You know, oh, Ooh, Nate's hooked up. That's a better one. That is a good fish. Good fish, Nate. Let me grab the net for you, bud. He definitely doesn't want to give. It's coming out. They do not like the boat in six feet of water, Nate. <laughs> we go. Nice looking walleye. Oh, baby. Nice fish, That's Nate. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> oh, man. And it just showed that bait. Beautiful. Unreal. Nice fish, Nate. Sneaky. Oh, nice looking fish. Whew. That's a fatty. Nothing like catching them in six feet of water. They have nowhere to go but sideways. That's a nice, healthy fish. That's what it's all about. Nice fish, Nate. Let's get that back in the water. Beauty. You know, Nate and I have had a fun day on the water. We've actually caught a lot of wallies. We didn't get a ton of big ones. We got a few big ones. Pitching plastics this time of year on a flat, calm day to find them up in five feet of water. I don't get a lot of days off just to have fun and go out fishing and cast around. So. Enjoy being in this brand new Pro V. Thanks for fishing with me today, Nate. You betcha. Awesome, there she goes. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like more information, check out lundboats.com or these other online outlets.